Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Q4 FY21 earnings conference call of Tulasa Techno Engineering Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the lesson only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would now like to hand over the floor to Mr. Sneet Shah from Perito Capital for the opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you. Good evening, everyone. This is Sneet Shah from Perito Capital. We represent Investor Relation for Salasa Techno Engineering Limited. On behalf of Salasa Techno Engineering Limited, I welcome you all to our Q4 and FY21 earning conference call. I have with me from the management Mr. Shashank Agarwal, Joint Managing Director, and Mr. Pramod Kala, Chief Financial Officer. We will have a brief opening remark from the management, followed by the Q&A session. Please note that certain statements made during this call may be forward-looking in nature. Such forward-looking statements are subject to certain risk and un uncertainties that that could cause our actual results or projections to differ. Salasa Techno Engineering Limited will not be in any way responsible for any such action taken based on such statements and undertakes no obligation to publicly update these forward looking statements i would like to i would like now uh, i would now hand over the call to mr shashank agarwal for his opening remarks over to you sir uh thanks sir uh, good evening everyone and welcome to q4 and fy21 earnings conference call I hope everyone is keeping safe and healthy during these tough times. Let me start the call by taking you through some of the key developments during this financial year. The year gone by has been a challenging one, starting with the nationwide lockdown, which led to a lot of uncertainty and business coming to a standstill. However, once the opening of the economic activity has started, we have seen things getting back on track. I'm happy to share that our manufacturing units and projects had been running smoothly post the initial hiccups during the early during early this year. In fact, this year we have seen some key operational developments which will shape our growth journey going forward. With strong expertise and experience in the steel fabrication, during this year we successfully completed and plant, uh, completed our plant capex to set up new units to manufacture large and heavy structures. This unit will provide heavy structural steel fabrication for bridges, power plants, airport hangars, micro stations, stadiums, and prefabricated uh, structures for buildings. The, unit, the new unit has been installed with a capacity of 15,000 tons per annum, which is one of the largest installed capacity in Northern India for manufacturing of such products. This new product offering will not only help us in opening up of new revenue stream, but also lead us to become one of the leading players offering total customized steel structures for all users. We have incurred a total capex of about 20 crore rupees on this new vertical. The unit has been commissioned and was ready for commercial production as on March end. As on date, we have an order book of rupees 70 crores under this vertical to supply about 8,400 metric tons of structures. The orders we have received the various reputed companies in India, and I'm happy to share that the dispatches against these orders have started early this week. Along with the strengthening and increasing domestic presence, we are also working towards increasing our exports of telecom towers. During the year, we entered into a two-year supply agreement with American Tower Corporation to manufacture and supply telecom towers for African markets. And in the very first year itself, we have received and successfully executed export orders to APC worth rupees 27 crores. During the year, our export revenue stood at Rupees 35.5 crore versus rupees 27.8 crores uh, as in last year. So year on year growth of about 28 percent. 
of the transmission and distribution segment, we are seeing increased tendering, and but we are also being selective in the projects that we did. The total order book as on 31st May 2021 tends to be 988 crores, and this mainly includes EPC orders outstanding that is pending to be executed as on 31st March for a value of about 260 crore rupees. EPC orders which have been received after 31st March, they are during the last two months, that's April and May, for about 346 crore rupees. We are also uh, lowest bidder and waiting for the LOI uh, for EPC orders was 80 crore rupees. And we already have orders from our manufacturing, uh, uh, for manufacturing uh, heavy structures for our new plant of about 70 crore rupees. And we also have a, a pending order which is under execution for Bangalore Metro for track lane uh, along with our uh, JV for about 250 crore rupees. Now coming to the financial highlights for the quarter and the year ending 31st March 2021. I'm glad about the I'm glad about the performance our team has delivered during these challenging times. On a consolidated basis, we have registered highest quarterly revenue for any particular quarter. That is for this quarter 2021 at rupees 211 crores. This is a 95% year-on-year -year growth over Q4 FY20. This has been driven by robust growth in both our steel structures, manufacturing, as well as EPC business. A bit of for the quarter stood at rupees 19.2 crores compared to rupees 9.6 crores in Q4 FY20, reporting a year on year growth of 100%. A bit of margin for the quarter stood at 9.1%. The reported fact for the quarter stood at rupees 9.9 crores compared to rupees 3.1 crores in Q4 FY20 an increase of 163% on a year-on-year -year basis with a fresh margin of 4.7%. For the financial year, FY21, our revenues from operations stood at rupees 596.6 crores compared to 536.3 crores in FY20, a year-on-year -year growth of 13%. And that is when we have been able to work only for about uh, 10 and a half months. Abita for the year was rupees 57 crores compared to rupees 51.5, uh, 51.8 crores, a growth of 10%. That for the period stood at 29.9 crores compared to 22.4 crores in the previous year. To speak about the segmental revenue contribution in FY21, revenues for manufacturing of steel structures stood at 80%, EPC power transmission at 14%, EPC railway electrification at 6%. I'm happy to share that the Board of Directors has considered and approved an issue of bonus shares to the shareholders in the ratio wise to one, subject to approval of shareholders. For the financial year 2021, the Board of Directors have recommended a final dividend of rupees one for equity share, that is 10% uh, of face value of rupees 10, subject to approval of the shareholders. It is important, I mentioned here, that 10% uh, is on the increased equity, which would be post bonus. So on the current equity, it is 20%. I would also like to update you that during the financial year, the company has raised funds of rupees 17.1 crores by way of issue of 10 lakh substantial share warrants. And this funds were primarily utilized for the new KPEX in the new vertical. Another development that I would like to share with you is the appointment of Mr. Uttam Prakash Agarwal, a chartered accountant, as an advisor to the board. He is a chartered accountant with over three decades of experience in the field of taxation, finance, and restructuring. In the past, he has carried out the statutory audits of the government undertakings and mutual funds. And he has served on the board of many big companies. Our company wishes to gain from the vast experience he possesses and would like to further improve on the corporate governance in our company. We are very confident about the opportunities in our focus sectors. We continue to see a lot of opportunities coming in our way as the telecom operators are working towards improving their connectivity. Also in the near future, 
Once the rollout of 5G begins, we expect exponential rise in demand of telephone towers. Increasingly, we see good demand from power and railway EPC segments, and also our new steel structure segment. We remain committed and are working towards our set targets of achieving higher profitable growth and becoming one of the leading players in our industry. I would like to thank all our stakeholders for their continued support, faith in us, and at the same time, I would like to thank my team at Salasa for putting all the efforts together. This is all from my side. I would now ask the moderator to open the floor for question and answer session. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, we press star and one on the touchphone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking your question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants who wishes to ask a question may press start and one. The first question is from the line of Shagun Sharma, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Um, ha hello, sir. First of all, I wanted to congratulate you on such excellent numbers. Um, I had uh, two questions, basically. So first, uh, as I understand that telecom is a significant re revenue contributor for the company. So, um, and it is also uh, heard that, you know, in the coming quarters, 5G trials will, will start in certain urban and rural area, areas. So, uh, sure. what are the prospects uh, as a tower manufacturer, if you can please elaborate, sir? Okay. So, thank you. Uh, and uh, uh, Telecom, of course, is our main uh, uh, revenue generator. We started as... Uh, uh, primarily as telecom tower manufacturers and we, and we continue to be the market leaders in telecom uh, tower manufacturing and having maximum number of market share in, in the market. As for the uh, telecom towers required for 5G, okay, the 5G trials which are going to happen are only the trials uh, uh, you know, at a commercial level by certain companies, which is a precursor to the major expansion which is going to happen was the spectrum is auctioned early next year. And we are already seeing that activity happening uh, at the customer end, wherein there are a lot of demand coming in from them in terms of uh, increased and improved design uh, for 5G, which we are working upon. We have already put a few sample sites for them, and we expect a lot of growth coming in once the 5G is actually launched commercially uh, early next year. But even today, I mean, except uh, uh, barring these two months, April and May, uh, wherein uh, the new the side build was uh, held up because of pandemic uh, all over the country. And the customers had decided not to roll out anything because of the health issues. The customers have now started coming in. And uh, the, the work on the sites has started. And a lot of expansion is already happening for 4G. So I, I would like to mention here once again, though I told this in earlier con calls also, uh, uh, for 5G, there will be a lot of standalone sites, whereas there will be a lot of non standalone sites also. So, non standalone sites would be uh, where the 5G would be deployed on the existing towers of 4G, and uh, the standalone site would be where only 5G antennas would be there. So, there's a lot of extension happening for the 4G at the moment, which ultimately are going to be used for 5G as well. All right, sir. Uh, and so my second question pertains to the railway front. Uh, what kind of opportunities are we seeing and what is the current order book in this segment? And are we are there any new projects which, which we did for, sir? Yeah, so uh, we 
keep on uh, building for new projects. And as on date uh, uh, for railways, uh, we have a pending order book of about 76 crores. Okay. And we also uh, have a pending order book wherein we are doing uh, track laying for Bangalore Metro for 250 crores through our JV Salafide work. So in total, about 325 crores is something uh, uh, which is under execution. And uh, probably we have bidded about another 300 crores of uh, uh, few uh, new projects where the tenders have been submitted. Okay. And I see a very uh, robust growth in the railway business as a government focus area. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of focus uh, by the government uh, for increasing uh, railway electrification and overall development of the railways. All right, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask a question, they press star and one now. The next question is from the line of Dheeran from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, am I audible? Yes, very yes, much. Sir, you are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir, uh, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, on the EPC side, how is the current execution activity? So, wanted to know all our projects working with 100% labor force, or are we facing any issues? Uh, of course, uh, during April and May, I mean, EPC activity was a bit small. I mean, there's a lot of noise at your background, can you? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Oh, I'll mute my line. Yeah, okay. So, there were a lot of, uh, uh, you know, because of uh, pandemic, uh, activities were, of course, affected. But we were still working uh, almost on all the projects with uh, somewhere at, uh, with 50% of the labor, somewhere with uh, 60% or 40%. But yes, it was not completely uh, installed, uh, installed, but it was uh, you know, was was going on, and in fact, we have uh, you know completed a couple of projects during this time. Okay, okay, and so in this new manufacturing unit, uh, we have already secured uh, you know eight thousand four hundred metric ton uh, of order, right. which is worth seventy right. crore, right? right? And but sir, you guided that maybe for the full year we can generate hundred crore kind of revenue, but when I look at the right. Uh, right. um, at fifty percent capacity, sir, we can generate seventy crore. So this plant has the potential to generate one fifty crore kind of revenue. So, so, so this uh, yeah, eight thousand four hundred pounds. So we take time to deliver. I mean, we cannot deliver it like overnight. It take at least seven to eight months to deliver it. So we expect to do around ten thousand pounds uh, during the whole year. Ten thousand, ten thousand five hundred pounds during the whole year, giving revenue for about hundred crore. Okay. Okay, and so lastly, any order inflow guidance for current year? So right now, we have a pending order book of about 1,000 crores, wherein ATC orders which are pending for execution is about 260 crores. ETC orders uh, which we have received during the last few months about 300 crores, 325 crores odd. And uh, we are expecting uh, orders on LY where we already L1 of about 80 crores. 70 crores is something which is coming from uh, our new vertical and Bangalore Metro is something which is 250 crores, which adds up to over 1,000 crores of order, which is to be executed. I mean, most of the ETC projects will not be executed uh, during this year, but we take 18 to 24 months to uh, you know, execute all these orders. And apart from this, we have a regular uh, orders from telecom sector for about 25 to 30 crores every month, which is which we normally don't undertake uh, in the order book as such because uh, uh, it's a everyday order kind of a thing. Okay, and so how much we have won in FI twenty one total order inflow in all, right. all the segments? One. We've exceeded 170 crores, and the order. Yeah, but what is the what is that we have received uh, during financial year 21 is about 
uh, I can send that to you. Oh, I don't have those figures rightly, uh, you know, right uh, in front of me. But we can get back to you with those exact numbers. Okay. And sir, any revenue guidance or volume guidance for current year? See, uh, uh, we have lost two months. Okay. Uh, of course, we have lost some ground during last two months uh, in terms of our EPC business and uh, especially for telecom also. But I believe uh, we would uh, cover it back uh, by at least 30 40 percent in the next 10 months. Uh, so, you know, all given uh, if, if uh, you know, the uh, situation remains the okay, case, uh, situation remains good, and uh, there's no effects from pandemic or lockdown. Uh, we should be, you know, we've done 600 crores this year. We should be at least going by 40, 45%. 40, 45% percent. 40, revenue growth. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and margin would be 10 to 11%, right? In the bank? Uh, yeah, typically in our line of business, uh, I bet our margins are in that range only. Okay. Okay, okay. Understand, sir. Got your point. Thank you so much, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Kalpesh Sothi from Valentis Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Yeah, so my question related to our two segment, uh, street structure and the EPC. What we have seen the in Q4, there is a sharp uh, decline in the margin of the street structure. That is, uh, we seen a, a very good uh, execution of EPC in Q4, which led to a higher uh, EBIT. So, yeah. so what was the reason behind the decline in the EBIT for the street structure? Okay, uh, see, you've seen how the steel prices have moved, right? Right. The steel prices have gone through the roof uh, during the last six months. Every month they have been increasing. And, you know, in our line of business, though it is a pass-through, but that is not passed immediately, you know, that month itself. So whatever we have sold uh, in February and March, right, mm -hmm. we had to buy raw material at that point in time. But though the effects of those prices have come only in April and May. Uh, you understand my point? Yeah, yeah. So, suppose, suppose we are billing to a telecom operator in March, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the price for this product based on the average property pricing of February, okay? So, similarly, the February prices are based on January property prices. So, similarly, when the prices of the steel went up, uh, you know, uh, especially during February and March, went up very high. Wherein we were executing orders which were issued already in January and February, right? So the effects of new prices could come only in April and May. So, uh, so it's a fixed pricing contract? No, no, that's what I'm saying. See, it's never a fixed pricing contract. Yes. What arrangement we have with telecom operators is that every month they decide a price starting from 6th of that month. Uh, 7th of that month to 6th of next month. Let's say we're sitting on, uh, we're sitting on uh, June, 2nd June. So we are following a price which has been decided by them from 7th of May to 6th of June. And now this price is based on the raw metal prices which were there in April, average pricing, right? Plus conversion. Now, suppose I'm buying something which is in May, the raw metal, okay, and the price has gone up. Correct? But I'm converting that into a tower and selling it during this month. So my margin on that particular tower goes down. Whereas when I sell it in the month, uh, next month, my prices would be higher. Right. So this is a cycle. It keeps on going. So, you know, it, it averages itself during the year. But yes, I mean, if you on a monthly basis or on a quarterly basis, the effect is reflected in a positive or a negative way, both ways. Okay, so do do it also affect our EPC margin? Hello, EPC margins uh, are not affected that much, except to the extent that probably 
the steel which we bought for several foundations in March was at a slightly higher price compared to what we had anticipated because some of the projects yes are of uh, a fixed a price a contract. But in most of the cases uh, for transmission, we have a price variation clause. But in some cases, like doing a substation structure uh, or a substation foundation or a, or a installation of a complete new substation, you have a fixed price contract because the short term contracts of about four to six months. So in those cases, there is no uh, PV clause. So sometimes that just comes in, yes. Yeah, so, you know, EPC also, you know, uh, procures steel structure, right? So it may be the inter-segmental seals. Yes. Yeah, so, that, so that will be at a, what price we do? Uh, you mean uh, from manufacturing to EPC, what price do we sell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, see, uh, since the project is in the name of Salazar only, we are not selling to a third party outside. So, whatever is the contract value with, of Salazar with the with the ordering agency, let's say we have an order from HCPNL or GPCL, at whatever price uh, the, uh, the order is, we, we sell at that price, plus the PV. Okay. Yeah. So, now, you know, the, the price also softening. What we have seen of late now, and prices haven't 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 softened down till now. Even yesterday, Jindal JSW has increased almost 3,500 tons per month. But yes, I think during the monsoon, uh, prices should soften down. That's what we are also expecting. So, so suppose even if prices soften down now in the month of June, we'll have a price based on the May costing, which is high. So probably you know this month our margins will be higher compared to. What it was in the month of March. You understand my point? Understood, understood, understood. Got it, fine. Yeah. So it's here, yeah, it's, yeah. it's basically, you know, it may be go up, go down, depending on the price. Yeah. 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 So it balances out itself over the year. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hans, thanks. Yeah. Anything else? No, no. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanaya Mahajan, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening, sir. So I wanted yeah. to know about the utilization levels of the current financial year and what is the maximum amount of it we can achieve. Utilization of? The utilization levels for the current financial year. Utilization level or levels of the capacity, the current capacity, right, right. The, the capacity for the production. Okay, so uh, last year, as I said, we worked for about uh, 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 ten months, ten, ten and a half months, because April was completely locked down. May we had started opening up in UP, and uh, the labor started coming in, and then May we were working uh, at about forty fifty percent. Last year, I'm talking about, and uh, uh, then, you know, from June onwards, uh, we started running in both the shifts. So last year, I mean, our, install, our installed capacity is about 100,000 tons, uh, which uh, if, even if we have a VSU 80,000 tons, uh, 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 you know, because of the mix of material, we consider this as 100%. So last year we did the... Uh, uh, this, this year. This year we did uh, 62,000 tons. Uh, during 10 months and 10 and a half months, which I would consider almost 90%, 80% capacity. And uh, uh, this year again, I mean, of course, May and uh, June, uh, April and May have been full wash out, but I believe uh, it will take a couple of months to, uh, you know, come back to normal situation. Yeah, yeah, that was helpful. Thank you. And uh, another thing that I wanted to know, could you give us some information on the client front as to who are your top five clients and what is the contribution of theirs towards their revenue? Okay, so we have uh, a wide uh, variety of clients in telecom, as I talked about. So we have uh, we have a market leaders in telecom, as I said. We have industry hours. And we had Bharat Infotel, which is now part of Indus Tower. So Indus Tower is the biggest uh, tower company in the world outside China. And they are our uh, biggest clients. And 
we uh, you know enjoy uh, the maximum market share with them uh, you know among all the suppliers uh, then we have american tower corporation in india uh, again we have 50% market share with them for whatever they roll out and then we have realized here so there are three major customers in the private sector which are our clients and then we also supply towers to people like at the companies like at the and bsnl or now recently we got an order from iti for about uh, 55 crores uh, for towers and uh, apart from telecom towers we are working with the state electricity boards pgcil uh, uh, core that is called uh, for the trade search for railway electrification. So in terms of, uh, if I say uh, top five lines in telecom, there are three. And then we have uh, UCPTCL, SCNL, uh, Jharkhand. Uh, then we have now Assam we are working in. We are working in Arunachal also. Recently we got a project from BGCIL for about 35 crores. And in railways, we are working in uh, Gujarat. We are working in UP, Punjab, Haryana, Delhi. And uh, we are also working in Bangalore for Bangalore Metro. So all these are big clients. I mean, yeah. I hope that covers uh, your point. Right. So I wanted to know about that front only. So I, it helps. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Shagun Sharma, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Um, hello, sir. Um, I, uh, if you can help us understand the opportunity size for the heavy structure unit that we have recently set up and uh, what is mm -hmm. the maximum which we can cater to currently, sir? So this uh, unit is going to cover uh, not many types of structures. This is all. Uh, this is dedicated to the customization as per the requirement of the customer. So we can build structures for ROVs, uh, that is railway over bridges. We can build structures for uh, flyovers, wherein you have seen, you must have seen, you know, under the road flyovers, you have those heavy steel structures that we manufacture. We can make a structure for power plants, for, uh, we can make a structure for a big steel plant, uh, wherever the extension is happening. We can make a structure for stadiums, airports, hangars, uh, even prefabricated uh, buildings uh, or steel prefabricated buildings which are coming up. We can make a structure for that. And, uh, uh, you know, and we have put in one of the best machineries uh, which are available in our industry. Uh, and, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we already have orders of about 70 crores uh, in this vertical. And we have started on a very good note, and we expect to grow substantially in this sector, you know, sooner than later. Okay, sir. Uh, and how do we procure orders under this division? Is it through tendering or we secure orders from private companies who are currently executing the infrastructure project? Uh, well, it is uh, it's not free. We, uh, I mean, I, I would give you an example. Uh, uh, most of the companies uh, or the infrastructure providers who have bid orders, they'll come to us for the structure. That's number one. Plus, we are working with uh, at, at our steel also. We are working, you know, we've got a good order from them for expansion of their steel plant. So all the columns and trusses and uh, all the specialized structures, customized structures is done by us. Uh, you know, for them. So it's both ways. I mean, we haven't participated in the tender as such. We have uh, actually procured orders directly from the parties who either had bidded in some tenders and got the orders or who are on the, uh, who, uh, who require uh, you know, these structures for their internal use. All right, sir. And so one last question. Um, are there any plans to further increase the capacity once you uh, achieve full utilization, sir? I think we'll look forward to that, yes. Oh, okay, sir. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sarika Kukshev, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, congratulations for the good result. Um, the current order book of 1,000 crore is to be executed during the current fiscal itself. 
No, no, no. Uh, see, the ECC orders uh, are typically uh, to be executed over 18 to 18 months to 24 months or even 30 months. Like we are executing order of Bangalore Metro, that's about 30 months order, right? Similarly, some of the orders are to be executed over 12 months, some are over 6 months, some are over 18 months. Uh, as on date, uh, the orders which are under execution, which are likely to be closed within this year, uh, would be about 300 crores, is what we are expecting. Maybe around 250 to 275 crores, you know. It's something which we are expecting to close within this month, and the rest of that would be going to the next year, and then year after that. Okay, and over above uh, that would be the structural 200 crores uh, extra. Yes. That's right. That's okay. right. And from Pericom as well, we are expecting the, uh, the another few of the 200, 300 crores to go in. Uh, telecom, uh, typically we do, I mean, last year we did about 350 crores in telecom alone. So I expect that those numbers to be even better, you know. There's no reason that those numbers should come down. Uh, okay. They should go up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, there is no dearth of opportunity uh, and this side, uh, which is actually, uh, we can... Sorry, uh, I, I'm not able to hear that. Can you say that again, please? So, uh, if we uh, look at the opportunity side, uh, yeah. from the uh, numbers which are actually floating across, uh, yeah. we don't see any sort of constraint, uh, so to speak, um, in um, grabbing uh, as many orders as we require. However, yeah. um, without uh, getting into the trap of heating up and uh, uh, exposing our working capital and uh, 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 other sort of uh, constraints, uh, if, if we can uh, uh, probably uh, explain at what point would we be comfortable uh, aiming for a, a, a higher growth rate on, on the top line. So, as I said, uh, we, are strict, we have closed this year at around 600 crores. And I don't see any reason that uh, uh, we should not be doing a growth of 40-45% this year, in spite of, you know, two months being wasted uh, uh, or washed out because of pandemic. You know, if everything remains uh, uh, okay, I mean, we are not affected by pandemic any further. And uh, as far as, uh, uh, you know, capital concerns or capital working capital constraints are concerned, uh, uh, we have restricted ourselves to about 25 to 30% of ETC business. See, our receptor business and our telecom business is uh, uh, less working capital oriented in terms that we can get uh, the payment, uh, you know, within uh, 25 to 30 days or even, you know, maximum 60 days. Whereas EPC working capital cycles are longer, which stretches the overall working capital cycle for the company. So, uh, and that is the reason that we restrict ourselves uh, to maximum to about 25 to 30 percent of EPC business overall. So, even if we do 250 crores, 270 crores uh, next year, uh, the top line should accordingly be, you know, uh, balance of that would come will be coming from. Uh, uh, manufacturing, manufacturing, yeah. 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 Uh, so, which segments would we be keen on uh, getting more orders from? Uh, see, we are always looking for good orders, uh, whether it is for manufacturing or EPC. But now, since we have good order books, uh, we normally restrict ourselves and we become selective in picking up uh, the tenders where would we like to participate. I mean, we have an opportunity wherein we can even get 2,000 crores or even 5,000 crores out of today. Uh, but that wouldn't help because, number that, we don't have capacity to uh, capacity and capability to execute all these orders. Plus, we don't want to get into the right case. So we normally pick up uh, projects wherein we have, number one, the capability and capacity to execute, and we have uh, margins. I mean, just to increase the top line, we don't pick up the orders. We, we focus more on the bottom line. Right. So uh, uh, which segments would those be, which would be margin lucrative, uh, or probably uh, 
whether with the EPC ones, uh, I believe every every segment uh, looks different. Uh, so, well, it depends. You know, some of the EPC businesses are better margins, uh, are with better margins, some are not. So that's what I said. When we are, uh, you know, bidding for projects, we keep an eye on a definite margin availability so that, you know, end of the day, we are left with something. It's not that we should uh, run high and dry after the project is completed. But yes, I would like to reiterate that we are more focused on manufacturing, wherein uh, we have better working capital cycles. So, I mean, given a choice, we would prefer to take a manufacturing order of the same value compared to if it was a UPC project. So, if that's the case, then uh, we should be uh, investing more uh, when it comes to the capacity at this juncture itself, because we already uh, have a, 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 a vision from the government uh, as to what they actually are aiming for. Right. If we also plan to grow along with the size of the opportunity, uh, we should be uh, proactive. Of course, you are absolutely right. And uh, in fact, you're working towards that and adding the new verticalism that there is an only. And plus, we have a plan on the NVIL uh, to put up a new galvanizing plant, which would add to the capacity. You know, we are yet to announce that, uh, but we'll do, uh, do that you know, later because once it is finalized, we will we'll do that. Uh, I mean, we are absolutely right. Uh, we are thinking on the same direction. Right. Thank you so much and all the things. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I'll just uh, mention one more thing here. I mean, one of the participants had asked uh, for the order received uh, during this year. So, EPC orders we have received for about 375 crores during the year. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. Participants who wishes to ask a question may press start and one now. The next question is from the line of Kaushik Takrar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Sir, I have a th three queries in my mind. Uh, yes. yeah, yes. How will 5G rollout be beneficial for our company if 5G devices can be installed on the existing towers? So I just mentioned that uh, in my previous answer also. There will be a lot of uh, towers which will be utilized only for 5G, which would be new towers. And there will be a lot of towers wherein 5G antennas would be deployed on the existing towers itself. So it will be a mix of existing towers plus new towers. Yes, 5G present a huge opportunity for companies like us where a lot of demand for infrastructure would be required to seamlessly connect everyone on 5G. Okay, I got it. And uh, I have read somewhere that company is planning to enter in renewable energy and artificial intelligence also, is it right? So, see, we have, uh, we already do structures for solar power plants. So that is what we do related to renewable power. And yes, on the artificial intelligence side, we have done some uh, you know, trials in-house uh, wherein we have tried to do surveys of towers uh, through drones. And uh, those are at very, very you know, nascent stage, I would say. Uh, it is a remarkable growth for our company, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's your company. And, uh, sir, uh, th the third query in my mind is uh, uh, cyclone like talk uh, type of cyclone results in the region. So, is this all beneficial or harmful? Look, this is for the whole country and the whole people. It's not that 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kamlesha from Disha International Limited. Please go ahead. Hi, Shashank. Bye. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Can you explain me? Uh, I see the balance sheet that the, there is a huge increase in the other income from last year from 170 lakhs to. 1,000 lakhs. So what is it consist of? Uh, 
promote you? Would you like to answer that? See, mainly out of this, around two uh, more hundred crore rupees is from the interest income and all that, and a small and some amount of eight crore rupees is around from the in the value increase, whatever investment we are having basically as per accounting standard. So this is uh, okay. yeah. This is out. It's around more than two hundred two crore is uh, interest income, and plus uh, across eight crore is that uh, particular income invest increase in the value of the investment. Value investment. So basically, yeah. that was the main part of the increase in um, uh, income for the uh, for the yes. plan. Yeah. 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 Okay. So after um, issuing the bonus, um, what what percentage of the Revenue will increase in the next year. Okay. See, revenue doesn't have any uh, revenue doesn't have any relation with the bonus issue as such. The bonus no, no, has been issued. Uh, the capital will be doubled. Yeah, the, the see the the capital would be doubled. Uh, of course, uh, I mean it's only the it's a bonus share. Company is not getting anything by issuing bonus uh, share. I mean, we are getting. I mean, I the capital is increasing. The relevant uh, IPS will come down, no, for the next year if if, okay. if to, the in income is not increased. Sorry. So, what will be the expected uh, revenue or, or, or income from the operation from the next year? So, as I said, I mean, this is irrespective of the bonus issue. I mean, bonus issue has got nothing to do with the revenues of the company. Uh, uh, I mean, by issuing the bonus share, the company is not getting any additional revenue. Number one, not additional capital. It is being issued from the reserves and surplus of the company. That's number one. As far as the revenue top line is concer concerned, I've already mentioned that we're expecting a growth of about 40, 45 percent next year, in, in spite of the so, pandemic. Uh, what I've been through. So you'll be able to cross on uh, like thousand crore uh, uh, in income in the next year. See, forty percent doesn't, uh, uh, you know, add up to one thousand crore, my friend. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. I understand. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congress. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sharad Singh, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, so you said you expect a 40% uh, growth in the next years, and you've said you don't, you know, you're looking to restrict your EPC segment. So uh, where is the growth expected, and what can the margins look like next year? Any change in margin profile? So 100 crores we are expecting from the new, new vertical which we have just started, as I said, for the heavy structure division. Okay, and uh, uh, telecom uh, and other structures would also grow by 10 to 12 percent. Uh, because uh, the two reasons was the steel prices are already high, and plus that will try and do more tonnage. So on both the fronts, that would increase. And EPC business, uh, you know, out of as I said, would be around 250, 260, 270 crores somewhere. So that will that should add up to around 850 uh, odd crores plus minus on the top line. As far as the uh, uh, margins are concerned, we typically operate at 10, 10.5%, 11% at the margins. I mean, even the best case scenario, it will be 10 and a half, 11 percent Worst case scenario, it should be 9.5% to 10%. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask a question may press start and one now. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Agarwal from Silasa Techno Engineering Limited for closing comments. All right, if uh, uh, there are no further questions, uh, then I would like to thank everyone uh, for the participation in our Q4 and FY21 earnings call. In case of any further queries, uh, you may get in touch with uh, Pareto Capital Advisors or feel free to get in touch with us, and we look forward to interacting with you in next quarter. 
uh, and I would like to wish everyone a great day and keep safe during this pandemic. Stay safe, stay healthy. Keep the stance, we are marked. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of Salasa Techno Engineering Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.